England boasts a rich tapestry of history and heritage, and our ancient landscape is abundant with magnificent stone circles, earthworks, barrows, hill figures, castles, cathedrals, churches and manors. But our past is also hidden deep within our towns, villages and countryside. And in this series, I want to step off the beaten path and see what history can be uncovered. We begin in the suburbs of Surrey. Welcome to Cheam. Cheam today is a large suburban village engulfed by the London borough of Sutton and a prominent commuter town, a far cry from the early 19th century when the population was only 616 residents. Of course most people will know Cheam from the 1950s and 60s BBC comedy show Hancock's Half Hour, with comedian Tony Hancock living in the fictional house of 23 railway cuttings, a road in East Cheam. Now, people like to think that East Cheam never existed, just like railway cuttings. But an 1841 census actually does list East Cheam as a real place, so not as fictional as you're meant to believe. Lying within the Anglo-Saxon division of Wallington 100, Cheam can be dated back to at least 1018, when Chersey Abbey owned the area. Although there is evidence of much earlier occupation. In 1939, Iron Age pottery was found in nearby Nonsuch Park, although no settlement has ever been found by later archaeological surveys. Like many of our ancient towns, Cheam appears in the Doomsday Book of 1086, and at that time was held by the Archbishop of Canterbury, and was rendered at £14. By the Middle Ages, Cheam had become well known for its potteries and breweries. Breweries, in fact, actually flourished here from 1200 onwards, with the last one only to close in 1910 on Morgan Road. Cheam village itself retains a pleasant rural feel, with its mock Tudor buildings and village atmosphere, but some of its historic structures offer a much older tale of the area. The old cottage along the high street was built in the late 15th or early 16th century and became a small brewery in the 18th century. When the main road was widened in 1922 and the cottage facing demolition, the building was literally dismantled and moved 100 yards down the road from its original plot. Along Malden Road is the Grade II listed Old Rectory which date from the early 1500s. For many years, the rectors of Cheam were bishops of Chichester, and this post is still an important church position today. It is tempting to imagine the rectory in Tudor times as being a kind of B&B &B for prominent visitors to the court of Nonsuch, humming with gossip of the day. As you would expect from a property with such a rich and fascinating history, there are many stories and reports of paranormal activity. These include apparitions of a child who has been seen several times, a white nurse, and even a Roman legion that marches through the living room wall towards the old village of Cullington. In 2007, I did a paranormal investigation at the old rectory, uh, and although I've got a very skeptical head when it comes to all things unexplained, it was a very interesting evening. Just along from the old rectory stands Whitehall, a wonderfully preserved Tudor building, complete with a 15th century well. Dating back 500 years, this fascinating house features original timbering, and was home to the Killick family for over 200 years through the Victorian and Edwardian periods. Retaining much of its original appearance, Ye Old Red Lion Pub has stood on this site for at least 400 years and is reputed to be the oldest public house in the London Borough of Sutton. There is an old well at the front of the pub and this was used as recently as 1930. The pub also boasts its very own priest hole. Now under protection from the Church's Conservation Trust, Lumley Chapel is considered to be the oldest building in the Borough of Sutton and thought to date from at least the early 11th century. Overshadowed by a 19th century church dedicated to St Dunstan, itself a replacement for an earlier Georgian structure, Lumley Chapel is all that remains of the original medieval structure. Okay, this is interesting. Here at Lumley Chapel, 
little hole here would have been where lesser members of the medieval village actually could have listened to the sermon going on within the chapel. Okay, it's actually quite sort of blocked up now. Following Henry VIII's dissolution of the monasteries in 1536, which changed the face of religious order across the country, Cheam was bought by Henry Fitzalan, 12th Earl of Arundel, who passed the estate on to his son, John, Lord Lumley. It wasn't until the 1580s that Lord Lumley, who was an ancestor of the actress Gina Lumley, converted the chapel into a private memorial for his two wives, Jane and Elizabeth, and his children, who unfortunately died in infancy. Behind the village is the vast Nonsuch Park, a popular recreational area, but it's also an area of important historical interest. The Grade II listed Nonsuch Mansion, for instance, was built between 1731 and 1743 by Joseph Thomas and is in the Gothic Revival style of that era. When Samuel Farmer bought the property in 1799, he rebuilt it in the later Tudor Gothic style. But it was Farmer's grandson who designed the magnificent gardens that many come to see today. It was here in Nonsuch Park that the ancient village of Cunnington once stood. But it was in 1538 that everything changed. King Henry VIII, at the start of his 30th year of reign, purchased Cuttington and surrounding area. Now the village itself was swept aside to make way for Henry's magnificent new palace of Nonsuch. It was called Nonsuch because none such had been seen before, hence the name Nonsuch. As for Cuttington, the manor house, church and cottages were all destroyed. And although the villagers were compensated, it must have been a devastating sight to see their entire hamlet wiped out by orders of the king. Just following the trail down to the banqueting house, it's interesting actually, an old crusty once said to the musician Julian Cope that no one goes anywhere anymore unless you're signposted everywhere. This is what we're doing. The palace began construction on the 22nd of April, 1538, and must have been a mammoth building project. Built to show off Henry's great wealth and power, this masterpiece was constructed with only the finest materials and was larger than a football pitch. With its incredible architecture, including octagonal towers, the palace must have been a breathtaking sight for miles around, even rivalling nearby Hampton Court itself. Unfortunately, Henry died shortly before its completion. So what happened? Well, pretty much the only evidence that the palace ever existed are these stone markers showing the boundary of the original ground block. It was over a hundred years later that King Charles II gave the palace over to his favourite mistress, Barbara Villiers, the self-named Lady Castlemaine. Unfortunately, she was a notorious gambler and fell into heavy debt in 1682. In order to pay off the debt, she had the palace pulled down, sold off as much as she could and turned the park into farmlands. And with that, we lost one of England's architectural treasures forever. Luckily, the excavation of the site in the late 1950s revealed much of its original ground plot and many artefacts were uncovered. Interestingly, it was this dig that revolutionised medieval archaeology in the post-war years. It's still evident today. Even in a normal suburban town like Cheam, there is much to discover if you peel away at the surface. Heritage is everywhere. All you need to do is a little bit of digging. You might be surprised at what you might find.